Analysts at Retira Capital say they anticipate a mixed equities market as investors continue to weigh the impact of further corporate earnings releases while reiterating the impact of the diversification benefit that the ETF offers, maintaining a positive outlook for the exchange traded fund market. Just to Tutun Ajagun, Portfolio Manager at Vertiva Capital, joins me now. JT, thank you so much. Pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you for having me, Esther. Well, let's get right to it. Uh, so, of course, for the month of August, the uh, OSHA index lost 1.2%. Just to uh, talk to us about your analysis of the performance, overall performance for the month of August, uh, what, it, what were the main highlights for you? Okay, so for the month of August, we saw that... Um, the all share index declined by about 1.22 percent and that was majorly driven um, by strong sell-offs across the industrial goods sector which outweighed the gains that we saw across key sectors so for the industrial goods sector just um year to date we noted that you know um the industrial goods sector had done quite well and due to the gains that were recorded in q1 we saw some um, profit-taking activities by investors during that period and so the industrial goods sector declined by over 13 percent. Mind you, we have large cap stocks in the industrial goods sector. Um, however, um, looking at the performance of other sectors for um, banking, um, I know due to the stellar earnings result by Zenith Bank, um, it appreciated by um, over, um, Zenith appreciated by over 18% and it contributed to the 6% gain that we saw in the banking sector. Um, I know another thing that is also noteworthy is the dividend declaration announcement. I mean, it more than doubled, right. it doubled right during the period. Um, also for the oil and gas sector, we've seen a couple of corporate um, announcements um, corporate announcement like the acquisition, not just the acquisition, corporate results from um, likes of Total, um, you know, turning out, you know, good numbers. All in all, we saw gains, but because of the strong sell-offs in the industrial goods sector, that basically drove the all share index down mm. um, for the month of August. Right. I was going to talk about, you mentioned um, a dividend yield for Zenit Bank uh, basically doubling. But I wanted to ask you, I mean, the trend you've seen in the last year, uh, in dividend yields uh, across especially the banking uh, sector uh, names, uh, perhaps also in the other bellwethers across sectors. What, has there been any major change? Well, um, so maybe no, no major change, but if we look at this year, what, one of the noteworthy things I need to mention is the fact that we've been in a high, in, um, high fixed income rate environment, mm -hmm. and one of the ways the banks actually make their money um, is um, via, like you know, interest income, income, their yeah. placement, and definitely that would contribute to the growth in um, their numbers, which will trickle down into the profits that is made available to be declared to shareholders as you know dividend. And we've seen that come to play, um, you know, for majority of these banks, Zenith, Stanley, right. and you know, right. Other now banks. you're a portfolio manager, and of course, uh, at the end of every month, beginning of every month, you, of course, look at portfolio, you look at uh, stocks, you weigh those uh, stocks that are worth, you know, having in a basket and those that are not. Uh, talk to us about what, uh, for the short-term investor at the market right now, with all that's going on, we're seeing, although we're seeing a bit of a uh, pullback in yields at the fixed income market, still high, I mean, compared to what we had a couple of years ago anyways. But what, what does a basket for the short-term investor, what does that look like? Um, so, Depending on their investment objective, right, some of the things we'll definitely have in a short-term investor's portfolio are the likes of, um, um, we have um, commercial papers. I know some of the um, corporates are actually out in the market and, you know, their returns are quite good. So we do our analysis and, you know, we see them actually invest in some commercial papers, not just even commercial papers, like you said, um, treasury bills, money market investments, even though we're beginning to see a dip in the fixed income yield, I mean, it's still double digits, which is, you know, Absolutely. not so bad. And with respect to equities as well, um, we've seen some investors, well, since it's short term, we've seen some investors um, actually um, old um, stocks, defensive stocks, like stocks in, you know, the agri sector, um, because one of the things you also need to look look at is that for agri sector, um, it's the, the, the produce are, you know, necessities that people will need to use 
like palm oil right. and things and like that. And when you say a Greek sector, I, I mean, only two names come Okuma. to mind for me. Okuma, <laughs> Fresco, I guess, the, those two guys, right, right. So for the long-term investor, quickly. Okay, so for the long-term investors, so some of the things they will definitely be considering, um, her, even stocks in consumer goods, banking, I mean, for consumer goods, in as much as um, um, we are seeing weak earnings result from these consumer goods, Companies, I know some of them actually offer attractive entry points. If and are they, they, are they worth you know, staying for the long term investor looking at some of those names that have been battered now because of you know, forex issues in you know, business environment? Are those stocks, those names still worth you know, riding the long haul with? Well, for some investors, they'll say they are ready, they, they really want to actually ride the long haul with some of those things. But the bank, but banking stocks as well are also. Um, other, there are also great options that you know we've seen investors actually um, take positions in because most of those banking stocks are currently on the value they are trading below their book value when you compare them to their sub-Saharan African right. pairs. Yes. So now, now actually offers you know a good entry point for investors interested in the banking sector. Now I know that I mean it's not all obviously as investors are investing in the market they're also thinking about you know all that's happening within the economy. How are investors weighing the impact of the reforms we've seen in the last one year on the business environment? We've seen especially and we always go back to the consumer guys you know how they're still being impacted especially around FX issues many of their inputs are not you know there isn't like widespread significant backward integration so they still rely on you know importation you know for many of their inputs you know, here and there. But what how are you seeing them navigating the environment? Uh, I mean, you said some, some investors are willing to go the long haul, but for the businesses themselves, how much innovation are you seeing? How much backward integration are they beginning to invest in now? Okay. So two things. Um, I feel like um, one of the major things people should look at is mm. we'll see um, most of this company actually pass on um, some of the cost to consumers, and that will definitely you know, affect pricing, and um, that would be able to you know help them in a in a way to actually you know navigate this macroeconomic headwinds that we are seeing what well, for the typical investor out there another thing that we are also sort of seeing them um do is to sort of like you know uh, maybe investing like you know usd assets to just sort of like you know to hedge. edge against inflation and aside from that we still have some stocks in um some stocks in the market that actually they have delivered like um i mean for some stocks, they've delivered over 100% returns yet to date. So you see them actually take position in um, majority, majority of these stocks. So I think that's basically what we're currently seeing people do in the market right now. All right, JC, we're going to have to leave it there. But thank you so much for sharing that insight with thank us. Thank you very Appreciate much your time on the show. JC Shantutu, Ajagun Portfolio Manager at Vertiva Capital.